Hello everyone, Celtic Fairy Tarot back with another pick a card reading and today I will be water scrying for you. We are going to be getting you a message meant to find you. We have pile one. We have pile two. And we have pile three. Take your time, vibe out which pile is calling to you, and the timestamps are down below. Can't wait to get into it. Hello, pile one. You have chosen photo number one. And the first thing that I'm feeling in your energy is you are cloaked. <laughs> Whether you have done a cloaking spell or whether your spirit team has done it for you, you are kind of blocked off from more of the heavy, more negative energies, maybe the energies of other people. People can't quite read you. They can't quite figure you out. If you're at a distance from people, they may even be, you know, forgetting what you really look like. <laughs> like you are just cloaked off, okay? So we're going to be scrying here for you today, and I have a mix of spearmint, thyme, and basil, and we're going to put that in now. Okay. Yeah, I'm hearing like, I wonder what pile one is up to. <laughs> You're not really giving people any clues either. You could be staying off social media. You could not be posting as much. You could be keeping your accomplishments to yourself. Mm. <laughs> I'm seeing uh, the hat from the cat in the hat. It feels like you're kind of on this uh, exploratory adventure, whether you are exploring your outside circumstances uh, from a very cloaked, like Harry Potter invisible cloaked perspective, <laughs> where the external environment is not affecting you, but you're still kind of observing it, or you are on this, you know, internal journey of understanding yourself better, uh, coming to terms with maybe certain things from the past. But it just feels like you're in, like the cat in the hat. He taught the kids things <laughs> like there is a guide in your life, uh, whatever deity it is. Maybe it's the ancestors. There is a guide in your life that's kind of helping you navigate, having clarity, seeing things clearly, understanding things for what they were or what they are rather than what they are perceived to be. So you may have also called in some kind of clarity from spirit. Yeah, for a lot of you, this is the ancestors helping you. Uh, but for some of you, there are deities here that you may have called in. I'm seeing a bat as well. Some kind of transition is occurring and it's magical. It's, if you know the cat in the hat, it's magical. <laughs> like magical things are going to be happening for you. Keep your eye open for them. Keep your eye open for them, not your eyes. <laughs> Keep your third eye open. Follow the breadcrumbs. Pay attention to the visions, the dreams. There's a lot of clairvoyance here. Mm, I'm seeing a doe or a deer, a female deer. <laughs> um, and this doe is spinning and spinning and spinning in circles. And then all of a sudden the doe loses its head. <laughs> and I don't want you to think of that in a morbid way. I understand the symbolism. I feel like you, pile one, have lived a lot of your life kind of having to stay in this, you know, strong or defensive energy. A lot of your life has been 
in defense, right? You haven't really gotten to stop and smell the roses or exist off guard and just kind of be. And I feel like this guide is also helping you fall back into that energy, fall back into that like soft energy. And by soft, I don't mean submissive. I don't mean, uh, you know, anything like that. I just mean being able to live uh, without constantly looking over your shoulder, being able to live without constantly having to defend yourself in a room full of people or in a, a collective, just being able to exist and be yourself and understand yourself without having to defend who you are. The collectives around you are going to be shifting and changing. Friendships may be following, falling away. Uh, relationships may be falling away. Yeah. Hmm. It's definitely chaotic because I saw that deer and it was spinning. Okay. It was like, where the hell am I? <laughs> what the hell is going on? Yeah. Life is shifting, life is changing. I see a dragon. Uh, so some of you, the dragons could be helping you. That could be, uh, you know, one of the deities helping you. I also feel like I'm seeing kind of like, and I, I don't know, a dragon, I guess, standing up. It was laying down and then it, it kind of rose up. Uh, standing on your own two feet. Being able to live a life that is completely free of codependency, where nobody can take anything away from you, you're building right now, and you may not have everything you, you perceive you need. It is coming, is what I'm hearing from spirit. And the best part of it is, you're going to be the one that gives it to you. Everything you are going to find come into your life in the next, I want to say, five years, uh, you're just going to, I'm seeing like the fae, <laughs> like the fairies with their trinkets, right? They're just collecting trinkets. They find a trinket, they collect it. They find a trinket, they collect it. Uh, you're going to be collecting things. You're going to be stumbling across uh, necessities, stumbling across necessities. And it's like, you're going to it's not like everything's being handed to you on a silver platter. You're going to work for them, but you're going to stumble upon these opportunities for these trinkets. Like somebody's going to offer you a bit of help and you're going to have to take it the rest of the way. And you will. I feel like you will. You're in this mode where you're like, I don't know, I want, I'm want. taking your power back. Yeah. Like taking a leap of faith, investing in yourself rather than investing in anyone else, rather than investing in relationships that are just kind of running you into a wall. Yeah. I'm seeing a cat again. There's like this black cat energy about you where, again, the people around you, they're probably asking themselves, like, what is pile one doing? What is pile one up to? I haven't heard from pile one in a while <laughs> because you're making moves. And I feel like you're at a point in your life where you're not really ready to tell people or share what you're doing. I feel like in the past, maybe you've done that and things haven't worked out. You're nervous about the evil eye. I don't know, but you're holding your cards very close to your chest right now. And I, I don't know if you can hear the train, <laughs> the train horn. Yeah, you're holding your cards close to your chest, but you're doing things like people could perceive that you're not doing anything, that you've just kind of fallen off the face of the earth, <laughs> but you haven't. You're making moves. You're doing things. You're just not telling people about it. <laughs> you're like, th these are these are my wins. These are my successes, and I'm just gonna keep going. Yeah, I'm hearing that song Van Morrison. Days like this. Yeah, like I feel like you spent so much of your life pile to like debating your right to exist here. <laughs> Like, I don't mean to giggle, but I get it. I get it, pile one. You have been debating your right to exist here in this paradigm for a long time. 
Like I do have the right to feel this way. I do have a right to have this opinion. I do have the right to go after what I want. And maybe you're surrounded by people who don't want you to for whatever reason. People are strange, right? And now you're at a point where like, I'm done arguing with you. Like, I'm not going to argue with you anymore. I'm out. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm going to keep to myself. I'm going to go like hermit mode and I'm going to do what I want to do because I've spent way too much time uh, in my adventure here in this paradigm, worried about coddling you and you and you. I'm over it. <laughs> And I'm just going to focus on what it is I need and what it is I want. And I'm not going to rely on anyone else to give it to me. I'm going to give it to me. I'm going to go out and get it. Yeah. I also just heard, look at me adulting. <laughs> so some of you could be really doing things uh, you never thought possible. Really creating uh, a powerful foundation for yourself. Yeah. I just saw a lobster. I don't know what the symbolism of the lobster is. Hmm. I'm also seeing the tale of a mermaid. I feel like a lot of you in pile one, you're, you're the fae incarnate. Like you have, you carry the essence, the energy of the fae. And I feel like for a lot of your life, maybe that's what people are pushing back on. Like you think you can just paint and live an easy life, like go work a nine to five, like the rest of us, <laughs> like people mad about, you know, what you expect out of life or how you want to live your life. And for a while, maybe you felt like there was something wrong with you. Yeah. I'm hearing, I don't know how a world with such wonderful things could be bad. Yeah. Like you're just, <laughs> you have such a beautiful energy pile one and a giant round of applause for never letting it die. Okay. You have fought for yourself. You have advocated for yourself. You have debated for yourself. You have pushed back on all the conformity. You've, you've been through a lot. You've been through a lot. And that doesn't even count like the other trauma you've been through, right? Like just the trauma of being rejected by the collective is traumatic enough because it causes us sometimes to reject ourselves. But you're at a point not now where you're like, I don't care. Here I am <laughs> in all my glory. Here I am. And now I'm not. And here I am. And now I'm not like, <laughs> like you show up and then you're cloaked and then you show up and then you're cloaked and then you show up and then you're cloaked. <laughs> You're living life on your terms now and not anybody else's. Yeah. Oh, this is so beautiful. I'm seeing the scarecrow uh, from the Wizard of Oz too. People without a brain sure do a lot of talking. Is that the phrase? Because <laughs> that's what I just heard in my head. People without a brain sure do an awful lot of talking. <laughs> So I feel like, again, it's just, you've, you've lived your life hearing over and over again what you need to be doing, what you should be doing. Uh, you know, fall in line like the rest of us. If I have to work a nine to five, then you have to work a nine to five. And you're like, well, let's start a riot. <laughs> like, let's change this narrative. Like, if, if you don't even want to be working a nine to five, why should I want to work a nine to five, right? How about instead of both of us working a nine to five, we all just change the system, <laughs> like very rebellious Aquarian energy. Uh, I'm also seeing a three leaf clover here, or a club, like the club cards. <laughs> I just feel like you, I don't know, you don't fear the consequences of not falling in line. I don't think you ever have. You were probably a, <laughs> a powerful teenager. Like you were probably reckless, wild <laughs> because you didn't want to conform. You didn't want like I'm hearing the anthem. I don't want to be like you. I don't want to be just like you. I feel like you you were a teenager and you looked around at the world and the world is just you know, tolerating life. And you're like, why would I ever want to do that? 
<laughs> like, why would I ever want to get on that train? I don't want to get on that train. And I feel like in the past, there could have been instances too, where you're like, I want to change things, but I don't know how to, or I want to live this life of freedom, but I don't know how to like, like an artist who just doesn't know how to make their way in the art world, right? Maybe there was a point in your life where you thought you had to conform to a nine to five. Maybe you were a bartender like me <laughs> or a waitress like me. And you just kind of got like further, I'm seeing someone stepping gum, like further stuck, right? But you're seeing the possibilities now. Maybe a mentor is going to come into your life if they haven't already. Yeah. Maybe they'll come into your life and help you uh, navigate whatever it is you're trying to do. You're like, I see all these people living the way I want to live. How do I get there? How do I get there? And spirit is like, listen, you ain't never had a friend like me. <laughs> you say the word, I'll show you the path. Yeah. Yeah, I just saw the North Star. You say the word, I'll show you the path. I just heard it again. I don't want to live like this orthodox life. I don't want to live. Is that the right word? <laughs> I don't know. But I don't want to live this like average ordinary life. I don't want it. I just saw a palm tree. I saw a palm tree. I see the number eight. I feel like a lot of you have a goal of traveling and experiencing new things. And, you know, a lot of times when we talk about manifestation, a lot of people think that you can just wish it or will it into the world, but work has to be put into it. Uh, so pile one, if you're looking for some kind of out of the matrix, or if you're looking for a way to financially stabilize yourself in this world, without having to conform to a nine to five, without having to conform to any of that research. Okay. What is it that you want to be? What's it going to take, right? What's it going to take for you to uh, become that painter that you want to be, that writer that you want to be, that sculptor that you want to be, that photographer that you want to be? What's it going to take? That musician that you want, it could be anything. You beautiful souls have so much skill and so much talent. Yeah, you're just wanting to, to learn how to monetize it, research it. How do I do this? <laughs> how do I become a monetized photographer? How do I become a monetized writer? Uh, how do I do this? And you can even, you know, find people, find people on social media, message them. How did you get to where you're at? Find people in person, talk to them. How did you get to where you're at? Mm -hmm. My daughter wants to be a veterinarian. And I told her when she hits a certain age, she should seek out veterinary clinics where she can go help them for free. And she can learn things while like shadow these people so she can learn before she even begins college, right? Uh, something like that, like shadowing people. If you want to be a tattoo artist, walk into a tattoo shop and say, I will help you with anything you need here in this tattoo shop. If you just let me shadow you, if you let me watch what it is you're doing, if you give me, you know, techniques and things like that, you know, a, a tattoo artist isn't going to be for everybody, but maybe it's for some of you here and it goes across the board you know, hairstylist, um, painter, writer, <laughs> photographer, musician, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. Ain't no mountain high enough <laughs> to keep you from accomplishing these dreams. And we see this kind of like goblin thing sitting, right? Just sitting down <laughs> on a stool. And I feel like the action being put towards this is, you know, your make or break. 
I feel like your message here today, the message that was really meant to find you, there were a couple of messages here, but the message that is really meant to find you is what are you putting your energy towards? And what do you want to be putting your energy towards? What do you want to be calling in? And I get comments and messages all the time of like, I don't have the resources. Uh, I'm homeless and things like that. And I have so much compassion for that. I've lived in homeless shelters in my life. I've lived in shelters with two children. Uh, I've had every single home I've ever lived in taken from me. Um, no matter how much work I put into it or anything like that. So I get it. I completely understand. I am not dismissing that. I am not dismissing a lack of resources. If you find yourself in a place where there is a lack of stability and a lack of resources, focus on the one next right move. What is the one? Don't get overwhelmed with how am I going to get from A to Y? right? Don't get overwhelmed with that. What is the one next right move? And one massive piece of advice is you need to be comfortable with being uncomfortable, okay? I did not get myself out of the muck that I was stuck in by being comfortable. And again, this is not, you know, diminishing anyone's pain or anyone's journey or anything like that. It is simply a fact that when we are at a state where we have limited resources or we have limited foundation, limited stability, that in order to push through that, we have to be okay with being uncomfortable. It is a necessity. I get it. I get it. But you can do it, pile one. You can do it. You've been uncomfortable this whole time this whole time. You're just trading in the familiar uncomfortable for a, a new uncomfortable. And I know it's frustrating. Don't give up. And you can do this. Call in the cavalry. Yeah, I'm seeing like a big, <laughs> a big like troll person here, right? Like the head, the eyes, the mouth, the chest, the legs. There's a big boulder next to him. Like you have the help of spirit right now. Trust that. Trust that. Don't try to take over control of the situation. Let the situation flow. Let these opportunities come in for you and control what you can. All right? Make your way to where it is you want to be, a gallery, uh, a whatever, and ask somebody, how did you get here? Can you show me the way? <laughs> okay? All right, pile one. I'm going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey and until next time, bye. Hello, pile two. You have chosen photo number two and we're gonna be scrying for you here today. We have a mix of spearmint, thyme, and basil. Okay. The first thing that I'm seeing is a vision or a visual of somebody so upset they are screaming. The veins in their neck are popping out. They are incredibly disturbed by something. And under all of that anger, under the screaming, under the rage, there is a wound. You could be in this current moment, pile two, hell bent on justice in a particular situation. This could be romantic, this could be familial, this could be friendship, this could be work. Uh, you could very well be a Libra or have prominent Libra placements in your chart uh, because it feels like whatever the situation is, it, it hit you to the core of some kind of wound. It wasn't just that somebody betrayed you. It wasn't just 
that somebody did you wrong. It wasn't just that whatever situation this is, is unjust. It hit a nerve. It hit a very open nerve is what I'm hearing your spirit team say. There is a need here to look deeper, to look deeper at the situation and how it has affected you. What nerve has this situation hit? Because I feel like you could be so enthralled in this anger and in this rage, because quite, fr quite frankly, anger and rage are easier to feel than fear and sadness and grief. Anger is so much easier to feel than, than those other three emotions, but those other three emotions are calling you beneath the surface. And your spirit team is like, please, please pay attention to that wound. Yeah. It's like your mind is trying to protect you as well. You may not remember the memories of this. Like I'm seeing a mask. I'm seeing a mask. Like your mind is wanting you to focus on this anger, wanting you to process this through anger. And there's nothing wrong with anger. First of all, it's a very healthy human emotion, but it's covering something up right now. And your spirit team would really like you to unearth it because it is to your benefit. You're having a difficult time moving past whatever this is. You can't see past it. You're thinking about it constantly. It could be affecting your sleeping patterns. It could be affecting your eating. Yeah. I'm seeing this object like a scythe too. Is that what it's called? A scythe? Like you've just been cut down the middle. Like someone just cut you right down the middle. And you could be perceiving that there's no justice. You could be perceiving that they're getting away with this, right? Karma is very real. I know sometimes it takes longer to come in than we'd like. But you're having a difficult time leaving this up to karma. You're very, very focused on it. It could be um, almost to the point where it's it's not healthy for you, right? It's taking up too much of your brain space. Like I'm seeing someone fall to their knees. I just want to forget about this. I just want to move on. I just don't want to be angry anymore. I just want to uh, move forward. But that anger is still present. That grief is still present. That sadness is still present. And one thing about these emotions and emotions in general is they do demand to be felt. They demand to be processed and they demand to be felt. Yeah, but they're heavy. And, you know, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to work through these emotions. I get it. I'm seeing a, a beetle here. Like there's a need to dig. There's a need to go underneath the surface, this surface level anger. There's a need to dig underneath it. Why has this provoked you? Why has this provoked? I mean, honestly, I get it. Why someone could do what they do, why it would provoke you, right? But why is it provoking this rage? Not just anger, but rage. Like what is built up behind that reaction, right? If someone does something to us, if they betray us, we're going to be angry. We're going to be angry. We may even have rage for a day or two, but this rage, it sits, it calcifies. There's something keeping it standing. There's more behind it, like a domino effect, keeping it standing. What did this situation trigger within you? What past memories? What events? What is keeping these emotions standing? Your heart, your body, you're ready to let go of whatever situation this is, but your mind is not. Your mind has recognized a pattern. It has recognized a pattern. What is the pattern? What is the pattern? And why, why is it so deeply embedded within you? Yeah. 
I'll give you an example. I just came out of a marriage um, not that long ago, and I was betrayed in that marriage many, 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 many times. And I got to a point where it was nothing but rage. I felt for this relationship, for this individual, it was just rage. But it wasn't just because of the betrayal. The betrayal, of course, pissed me off. It would piss anybody off, right? It would make anybody mad. It would give anybody grief. Anybody would feel that. However, it wasn't just that relationship. It wasn't just that person. I had a relationship with my father where I was constantly being betrayed and hurt. I had a relationship with an ex-husband before this relationship where I was constantly being hurt and betrayed. It was a buildup of masculine energy, disempowered masculine energy, thinking they could just use and abuse me. And that buildup of that wound, all of those wounds combined, it caused a feminine rage that would leave you shaken in your boots, okay? <laughs> and I feel like that's kind of where you're at. You're, you know, whatever this situation is that you can't stop thinking about, it's not just this one situation. This situation was the straw that broke the camel's back, so to speak. And your spirit team is really wanting you to dive deep, look backwards. Where did it originate? Where did it start? Because we need to start caressing these wounds. We need to start opening these Pandora boxes that we've left within us. The mind may not want to look at it. It may want to completely bury it away so we never have to remember again. Talking this through with a therapist could be incredibly beneficial why is this provoking what it's provoking within me? Where does it come from? Where does it originate? And again, I get it. Someone betraying you is going to piss you off. It is going to put you in a rage, but it's continuing. Pile two. It's all you can think about. And your spirit team doesn't want it to have this power over you. Your spirit team doesn't want this person to have the power over you. They want to help you make your way backwards to try to unravel this tapestry of hell, this tapestry of pain, this tapestry of, of betrayal, this tapestry of rage, right? They want to bring you peace. Mm. I'm seeing a, a fish hook and I'm also seeing a music note. What kind of music are you listening to, Pile 2? <laughs> is it helping you? <laughs> Be sure that it is helping you, okay? I'm also seeing Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas. It's like this, this rage, this, uh, emotion that has been provoked out of you, it is detrimental to your vibrational frequency. You're like teeter-tottering right now. You're, you're teeter-tottering. And like I said before, anger is, and even rage, perfectly normal human emotions. It doesn't make you bad. It doesn't make you good. It doesn't make you evil. It doesn't make you good. It just is. It's very human, okay? But the choices we make, the choices we make are important. It's not what we feel and it's not what we think that determines our character and our frequency. It's what we do, okay? It's the choices that we make. And you could make you could be making choices out of this rage, out of this anger that are detrimental to you, whether they're choices against someone else and you are seeking some kind of revenge, or whether you are sabotaging self. You're being asked to look at 
these choices and you're being asked to look at again digging deeper underneath the the anger and the rage where's that grief what is it tied to what is it attached to working with a, so, a somatic coach working with a therapist to be able to again unravel this tapestry Yeah, I'm hearing you're not yourself right now, pile two. It's like I'm seeing you um, stuck in this like raving ocean. Like there's a giant storm and there's lightning and there's thunder and the current is fast and you're just kind of being overtaken by this current, overtaken by this anger, overtaken by these emotions. Yeah. And I also want to be sure to say, like, you have every right to feel how you feel. Nobody should be telling you how to feel. Nobody at all should be telling you how to feel. You have the right to feel how you feel. Just investigate it. Investigate it. And try to analyze whether or not the actions that are bred out of uh, keeping this emotion around, whether or not they benefit you, okay? Whether or not uh, they are leading to some kind of self-sabotage. Yeah, look, I'm seeing your inner child. I don't know if you all have seen the Lamb Before Time. I'm seeing Ducky. That is your inner child. Your inner child is incredibly sweet, uh, incredibly gentle. And it, it almost looks like a child here trying to reach up, trying to grab this like giant balloon and raise themselves back up. Your inner child is like, I don't want to continue to be in this energy. I want my magic back. I want my smile back. Yeah. If this is an energy that you're not wanting to move out of and you're happy with it, do you pile too. But if you resonate with what I'm saying, with your inner child wanting out of this energy, with your inner child wanting to process it so that it can leave rather than hold on to it, I really feel like it's important. It's taking up so much space within your head. It could be sabotaging uh, other relationships that you have in your life. It could be sabotaging your relationship with self. You could be doing things uh, like out of revenge rather than doing things you want to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm seeing the incredible symbol. I don't know. <laughs> I'm seeing the incredible symbol where that um, kid, what is a kid? What was his name? I can't remember his name, but he was mad at Mr. Incredible because all he wanted to be when he grew up was like Mr. Incredible. And Mr. Incredible was really mean to him. Uh, I think like pushed him over or something like that or pushed him away. And he kind of created Mr. Impossible created the villain that he would have to fight later in the movie. Spoiler alert. <laughs> but yeah, maybe watching, watching that movie could benefit you. But it's like, you have a choice, pile two. You have a choice to choose revenge and choose holding on to this, or you have a choice to heal and move forward. And the choice is, com again, completely up to you. There is no wrong or right choice. There is only the choice that is best for you. Okay.
This anger is powerful. I can feel it. This rage, pure, unadulterated rage. And fair enough. Fair enough. I've been there. But do you choose to stay there? Or do you choose to move forward? Do you choose to caress the other wounds within you that this has triggered? Or do you choose to stay? Completely up to you, pile two, okay? All right, I am going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey. And until next time, bye. Hello, pile three. You have chosen photo number three. And immediately, right off the bat, tuning into your energy, your spirit team is wanting me to sit with you in this sacred space and honor your feelings. I'm feeling Lilith here heavily. Um, this pile, I want to put a trigger warning on it uh, because this pile is going to be a little bit of tough love, not invalidating love, tough love. If you are not ready for that, you are not in the mood for that or whatever, <laughs> please do not watch this. Okay, if you are ready for the tough love, if you are ready to hear what Lilith has to say, then welcome. And we are going to begin. We have this jar here. I have a mix of thyme, basil, and spearmint. And we're going to begin scrying for you. Okay. What I'm being shown immediately is somebody who has lost hope, somebody that is having a difficult time getting their hope back. Uh, it's kind of feeling like the feeling of, you know, when you were a child and you got stuck inside of a shirt and you could not for the life of you find your way out of that shirt and you started panicking and there was a lot of emotion involved and you felt like you were going to be stuck in that shirt forever. I feel like that is kind of where your energy is at in terms of life, things that have happened. You feel suffocated by experience, you feel suffocated by trauma, you feel suffocated by memories, and you're kind of at this point where you feel like you're crawling out of your skin. You feel like there is no haven in the future for you. I'm hearing a crow. Yeah, let's see. Advice from Lilith, please. Yeah, there's that tough love. <laughs> I'm hearing Lilith say, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? When we were children and when we were stuck in this shirt and we couldn't find our way out, we had maybe a parent or a sibling uh, get us out of it. Maybe we didn't. Maybe we got ourselves out of it. Can you remember back to that time? How did you soothe yourself? How did you calm yourself? How did you walk yourself through that process? And if you were the person who had someone pull the shirt off for you or help you get out of it, that it's going to be a little more difficult um, because there may be a, a disconnect. There may be a disconnect in terms of self-soothing, in terms of knowing how to regulate your nervous system. So nervous system regulation could be a big priority on your priority list. We might move it all the way to the top um, because what she's saying is... Is there no way forward or can you just not see it through the panic? There's, there's stepping stones. There's choices. She's showing me a stone path forward. She's showing me a dirt path forward. She's showing me a path lined in flowers. She's showing me a path through a dark, scary forest. There are many paths forward. It feels like you're just too overwhelmed and you are too panicked to see them or to step onto them, even if you can see them, right? There's too much panic. 
there's too much anxiety. Grounding should be a major focus. Nervous system regulation should be a major, major focus. It feels like, again, that end of the world feeling, I'll never get out of this shirt. I'll never stop being sick. I'll never stop feeling pain. I'll never stop experiencing trauma. I'll never stop remembering these things. There's a lot of the way you're speaking to yourself is a lot of, I will never, I will never, I will never. Yeah. And I'm hearing Lilith say, how do you choose to write this story? Saying things like, I will never stop being in pain. I will never this. I will never that implies that someone else is writing your story. It implies that someone else is in control of what you are experiencing. Now, talking in terms of, um, you know, chronic illness, we can't control that, but we can control soothing ourselves. We can control finding out what helps us to feel comfortable. Those are things we can control. When we are feeling out of control, we control what we can. Yeah, I'm hearing her again. What are you going to do about it? And and not in a negative way, right? Like she's not trying to provoke you. <laughs> she's not trying to provoke you. What she's saying is there are things in your control that you may not be able to see, right? Or you may not think are in your control. Mm. I'm seeing uh, the face of a lioness. So Bastet could be here as well. Like what is in your control? What can you do about this situation? And there may be choices you don't like either, right? Sometimes we have to step onto a path that makes us uncomfortable or that we don't like in order to get to the next path in life in order to step onto that next path maybe we don't like the dirt path so much but the dirt path leads to the stone path maybe we don't even like the stone path that much but the stone path leads to the flower path right i want you to know pile three uh i don't look like what i've been through I've been in and out of homeless shelters. I was in group homes as a kid. I was constantly rejected by my family. I have an addict father who was incredibly abusive. I've had more than one abusive romantic connection. I've lived in poverty my whole life. I get it. I get it. A lot of you have been through so much. A lot of you have been through so much. And I, I don't say that to invalidate you. I, I genuinely want you to know that this advice and what I'm saying to you and what I'm agreeing with in terms of Lilith is not to diminish what you've been through. It's to hopefully empower you and motivate you to keep going. Because even though you may find yourself on that uncomfortable path, I get so many emails and so many comments about how one may be stuck in a situation they don't want to be in and they don't know how to get out. The answer is getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. You may have been drawn to pile two as well, um, but if you weren't, that's not a sign to go watch it. I would not be where I'm at right now if I didn't step onto the paths that made me uncomfortable. And I know that that's a hard message to hear. It's always been a hard message for me to hear. Um, currently in my life, I've just left. I've just left everything I loved behind for my highest good. A house that I poured everything into, a marriage that I poured everything into, many things that I poured everything I had into. And I had to leave it behind because it was costing me my sanity. It was costing me my heart, my physical body. 
I had to embrace the uncomfortable in order to once again find the comfortable. And it took me months to find that comfortable. And even now, I'm still in this limbo of what am I going to do next? I'm, I'm in the same boat paying my bills, so I get it. Pile three. This message from Lilith, it's a tough message to hear, which is why I said in the beginning, please don't watch this if you're not ready to hear this message. It is a tough message to receive that we have to keep going being uncomfortable, especially when we've already been uncomfortable for so long. I get it. I understand. But the alternative is to just give up. And Lilith does not want you to just give up. You deserve peace. You deserve happiness. You deserve all you are trying to manifest in the world. And it is there for you. We just have to find it. We just have to navigate the path to get there. She's showing me a treasure map. And sometimes in life, even though it's not fair, it's incredibly not fair and it can make you drop to your knees with the utmost feminine rage. I get it. Even though it's not fair, it's, it's important to push through pile three. Because when you push through, so many magical things can happen that wouldn't have happened if we just gave up. And when you just give up and you're on the other side and you're like, damn it, I could have seen that path or I could have taken those two uncomfortable paths to get to that great one. I wish I had known that. I wish I had seen that. When you are making choices that are for your highest good, even if they are uncomfortable, you navigate yourself more and more towards your destiny, towards the life of your dreams, the life you want, not the life that everyone else thinks you should have, not the life that your ego thinks you should have, but the life that lights your soul on fire. I've been there. I've been in the homeless shelters. I've been uncomfortable. I've been attacked in the homeless shelters while I was pregnant. There are so many aspects of life that I wish I didn't have to live through. And I would never tell somebody what doesn't kill you makes you stronger because it, it, it irks me, okay? There are times that I look back on in my life and I say that wasn't fair. That's not fair. There have been times in my life where I look around at other people and I see them having their needs met effortlessly and I've always had to work so hard for the bare minimum. I get it. I get it. It's not fair. But what are you going to do about it? Are you going to fight for you? Not fight for anyone else, not fight for approval. What are you going to do? I'm now realizing that I cannot afford rent anywhere without a higher income. So currently I'm going back to school. Um, it's not what I saw in my future, um, but it's what I have to do and it's going to be uncomfortable for me because I also have 5 million other things I have to do. <laughs> um, but hopefully this uncomfortable path, I'm also not good at school. So there's that, um, this uncomfortable path will hopefully lead me to a path that brings me and my family, my children stability. And it's still not fair. But I can either let that keep me in this victim mentality that keeps me uh, stuck, that keeps me unmotivated, that keeps me angry, or I can let that motivate me. I can let that motivate me to give me what I need, to move towards what I need. Whether it's in a shelter going to school, whether it's at a family's house going to school, I will have a life that belongs to me someday. And you will too, pile three. You will too. Lilith does not want to see you give up. I'm here to honor that feeling of unfairness. I'm here to honor what you've been through. 
I'm here to honor what you experience. You, nobody should be telling you what you're allowed to feel, okay? Nobody should be telling you that you're not allowed to feel angry. Nobody should be telling you that you're not allowed to feel even rage or sadness or grief. But how long are you going to stay there? How long are you going to allow yourself to stay there? I know it's hard. I know it is. I'm seeing the symbol for feminine energy and it doesn't matter if you're a masculine or a feminine who clicked on this pile feminine energy is all about creation right birth things like that birthing things into your world you may not have the current resources you need how can you get them and if it's an uncomfortable path to get them are you willing to be comfortable with being uncomfortable in order to jump from one path to another to get you where you need to be. You have help in the spiritual realm as well. You are heavily protected. Heavily protected. It's fair enough that you would feel what you're feeling, right? It's fair enough. But is it helping or hindering you to cling to that? Can we alchemize it? Can we alchemize it instead of sitting in it? Like I said, I feel that panic. I feel like I'm stuck in the shirt forever and I can't find my way out. We need to breathe. We need to focus. We need to ground. Grounding exercises are your best friend right now. Okay? T being able to talk yourself through uncomfortable circumstances, being able to talk yourself through uncomfortable things. I know you can do this. Lilith knows you can do this. I believe you may not know that you can do this. You feel tired. You feel bone tired. You feel worn out. Fair enough. Pile three. I'm sending you so much love. I'm sending you so much love. I'm sending you so much empowerment. And I hope over the course of this week, spirit comes to you in 800 different ways, guiding you down this path reminding you of the magic of life, reminding you of how powerful you are, reminding you of your power to alchemize this situation. You can do it, pile three. I believe in you, okay? All right, I am going to leave that here. I wish you the best of luck on your journey and until next time, bye.